Oh, guys, prepare yourselves. I'm going to read all this. I'll let you know, like, what page to jump to or what page, what uh, time to jump to when I'm done. All about carousels. Famous carousel carvers. The golden age of carousels began in the late 1800s and ended in the early 1930s with the Great Depression. During that period, three different carousel styles emerged. To the trained eye, these styles are as distinct as a finger, finger, mm, fingerprint. Fantastic factoid. The horse on the outside, just in front of the chariot on the carousel, is called the lead horse. This horse is usually the biggest and most exquisitely carved horse on the carousel. Coney Island style. The horses that Charles I.D. Loof carved tended to be very fanciful, with flashy, often jewel-encrusted saddles and bridles. MC Illusions... Illusions, I'm sorry. I... Ileons and Charles Carmel also carved horses that were less than realistic, frozen and highly animated poses. Stein and Goldstein carousel horses were known for their big buckles and lack of forelocks. Is all this true? Fun. Okay, wait, hold on. Fun, tastic, factoid. Some carvers carved only the heads and let other craftsmen carve the rest of the horse. Philadelphia style. These carousel horses were very realistic, with many sporting armor and other militaristic gear. The carousels that the Dentzel Company built often included horses with human faces carved somewhere on their sides. The Philadelphia Toboggan Company was not founded by carvers. As a result, its carousels displayed many variations of the Philadelphia style. Am I really going to read all this? Oh, yes, I am. Fantastic factoid. Most horses that are mounted on permanent carousels have tails made of real horse hair. Oh, that's awkward. Daniel and Alfred Mueller of DC Mueller and Bro Company were famous for their exceptionally intricate and realistic carousel figures. One of the company's founders, Daniel Mueller, is said to, is often said, to be the b b b whoa, look at that. I stuttered a hell of a lot just now. Is often said to be the best carver of carousel horses ever. Those familiar with Rolf Kessler's work might disagree. Driven by dark moods and odd convictions, Kessler worked by himself, creating carousels on a freelance basis. Some people found the intense expressions on Kessler's creations to be a little too realistic. Fantastic factoid. A carousel horse was carved out of many pieces of wood that were held together with glue and small dowels. Never nails, because they would rust. A horse's leg could be made out of as many as six pieces of wood. Look at how creepy that fucking looks. County fair style. A number of companies specialize in carousels that could be effortless, effortlessly moved, could be effortlessly moved from one place to another. The carousel horses they created were relatively simple in appearance, so they could be produced quickly and moved with minimal breakage. Armitage, Herschel, and Spillman were known for this style, and the carousels of C.W. Parker Amusement Company were seen throughout the American heartland in the early 1900s. Fun, tastic, factoid. Horses were carved out of soft wood, soft hardwood like base wood. This wood was soft enough to carve easily, but hard enough to stand up to a lot of wear. <clears throat> Fun, tastic, factoid. It's probably going to get old. I'm going to stop after this. The side of the horse that faced out and was most seen by public was called its romance side. Since it was the most visible side, it usually included much more detail than the inner side. Can we talk about this? I find this very interesting because like, okay, maybe nowadays things have changed a little bit, but I feel like romance was a little bit more like, and even now it kind of depends on who's who. But it's very interesting that the side that is faced and seen by the public is called the romance side. Especially because like, I feel like it's the most invisible side. Like people don't usually let them see your romantic side. Like that's usually the most invisible side to you. And like that is the most more detailed than the inner side. Well, actually, no, the inner side is way more interesting. I don't know. Anyway. Next page. How many pages is this? All about carousels, the history of the carousel. Carousels are merry-go-rounds evolved from games people in the Middle Ages used to play on horseback. In the 12th century, the Spanish named one of these games Carosela, which meant little war. I don't know if I pronounced that right. I'm sorry. By the 17th century, 
carousel among French royalty meant a festive day of contests on horseback. In one of these contests, riders would try to spear a small ring with their lance while galloping past it at full speed. To practice for this event, noblemen would straddle a wooden horse that hung from an arm that was attached to a center pole. As the center pole and arm turned, powered by horse, mule, or servant, the rider would try to spear a small stationary ring mounted on the outside of the carousel or the machine. Oh, that's the purpose of the game that we freaking had to get our head x-rayed for. Fantastic factoid before I continued. Early 20th century riders rode the carousel for the cool breeze it generated and for the thrill of riding something going fast. Seven miles per hour. Fantastic factoid. Carousel horses were often named. Their names would appear on the inside of their brittles. Anyway, continuing. Eventually, the word carousel referred to this machine rather than the pageant on the horseback that inspired it. By the mid-1800s, men, women, and children of all social classes were clamoring to ride this contraption, by which this time, by which this time, includes several rows of wooden horses. Innovations occurred rapidly after the carousel became steam-driven in 1870, and by the early 1900s, the carousel looked pretty much the way it does today. It's interesting to note that English carousels rotated clockwise, while carousels in America and the rest of Europe rotated in a counterclockwise direction. This is because the English thought it was important that riders be encouraged to mount from the proper side, the horse's left side. Bless the English. That is amazing. That is fantastic. Also, the game of trying to grab the brass ring was never popular in England. In the United States, moving counterclockwise allowed the carousel riders to use their right hands to reach for the ring as they went by. The fuck is the point of that, though? Fantastic factoid. Menagerie figures such as tigers, dogs, giraffes, and even frogs were found alongside horses and carousels in the late 19th century. But by 1920, these figures were on the way out because the carousel makers realized that many children were frightened of them and preferred to ride horses. Not wrong. Fan, no, I'm sorry, fantastic. I mean, they're fantastic too, factoid. The horses on the outside are bigger and more ornate than the horses on the inside, so they can be seen from a distance and will attract potential customers. Can I just check to see? Okay, this is the last page. All about carousels. What is a band organ? By 1920, most carousels in the United States were treating their customers not just to a cool, refreshing breeze as they rode, but to the bright, lively sounds of that distinctly American invention known as the band organ. A band organ is a mechanical device, meaning that someone doesn't have to play it. Rather, it produces music by mechanical means. In very simple terms, air supplied by a bellows at the bottom of the organ is forced through pipes which produce musical notes in relation to holes punched on a roll of paper. A variety of pipes can be activated at one time along with drums and cymbals so that the music sounds much like that of a small military band, hence the name band organ. Many people think the music they hear when they ride a carousel is... Calliope music. I don't know how to pronounce that. I never knew how to pronounce that. A Calliope, however, is a totally different machine. Designed to attract attention, the high-pitched flute-like Calliope tones are usually heard at the circus. Some, some antique band organs house speakers that simply broadcast pre-recorded music, but some still use a traditional but fragile paper rolls, while in others, the pipes are activated according to digitally recorded patterns. Some band organs can go back and forth between the old way of playing tunes and the new, improving the likelihood that as long as there are carousels, there will be band organ music. The thing that I'm upset about the most is, it's by Melvin A. Schwartz. That's not what upsets me. What upsets me is that I put the dumb battery thing in the wrong place, and now I don't know how to get it out of there. I don't. I have no idea how to get it out of there, and I put it in the wrong place. It's very upsetting. Very, very upsetting. What is this? I can use this to measure. What do you want to measure, though? This music sounds like danger! I don't like it! Ooh. Could I have some of these tissue strips? Be my guest. What the fuck do I need tissue strips for? Hi. Wow, Miss Destructo returns. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry about what happened before. These things happen. So, 
I hear you're out to solve the curse of Captain's Cove. How do you explain what's been going on around here? What do I know? I'm just an artist. Go ask our naturopathic engineer person. What's the fucking issue? The way I hear it, the shutdown is a good thing. For you, at least. You mean because I'm behind in my work? I'd be lying if I said the shutdown wasn't helping me get caught up. Meeting deadlines has never been my forte. Aww. But I certainly hope you're not suggesting that I arranged for the park to be shut down by somehow manufacturing this curse thing because that would be ridiculous. What the hell, dude? Calm the hell down. Do you see much of the other people who are working during the shutdown? Like Joy Trent or that security guard, Harlan Bishop? Nah. Joy Trent? She's like invisible even when she's visible, if you get my drift. And that Renacop. I've got no desire to see anything of him. Why do you say that? Dude is way too eager to make my business his business, that's all. Ingrid said you have her soldering gun. I need to get it from you, if that's okay. You bet. Here you go. Aww. Been meaning to return it to her, but I've been a little busy. Great. Thanks. Thanks, dude. I'll let you get back to work. Rock on. Uh, I like him. I'm sure he's a good egg. I like him a lot. I turned the lights off on him. Ha! <laughs> That'd be horrible. Uh, Ingrid. Let's go check her out. She's here still? Yep, she's still here. Hey, girl, hey! Hello, Nancy. How goes it? How well do you know Elliot Chen? Not very. But I've noticed he has a very strange aura. Very dark around the edges. Odd for an artist. But then, it's nowhere near as dark as Joy's. Her aura's a mess. Um, I would like to say that an artist's aura might usually be dark because there are dark spots in our hearts and that's where we use our art to get it out and to create light for ourselves and others. I'm not speaking for everybody and every artist, but I do notice that whenever I'm not feeling my best and I'm in a dark spot, that's when I usually write my best. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Why do you think that is? She's hiding something. And she's hiding from something. Something very big and very dark. Plus, she eats way too many carbs. <laughs> <laughs> to say nothing of pencils. I eat a lot of carbs. <laughs> what does that say about me, Ingrid? You guys, I don't know if I was paying attention, but I don't know what the welding gun is for. Thanks for your help. You bet. What the fuck was the welding gun for, though? What can I look at over here? Can I please look around? This is like the least amount of place that I've been able to look around. And I feel like this is the most interesting. Why is there a rope here? This whole place is just very uncomfortable. Uh, I believe that's mine. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, can't snoop too much. Why is Ingrid gets fucking pissed? All right, um, let's go to Harlan again. Hi, Harlan! Hey, Nancy, what's up? Nothing. I'll see you around. Go get him. Uh, you're nice. Kind of. I don't believe you are. No, I think you're fine. I feel like he's just like... I don't trust Joy or Ingrid. So far. Joy, you're back! Hi! I really do need to get this work done. Right. Sorry. Well, damn. Sorry. Fuck, dude. Let's get out of here. Okay, so we saw Harlan, we saw Joy, we saw Elliot, we saw Ingrid. So now what the fuck do we do? Let's go to Demons of the Dark Haunted House. See what happens. Ugh, that's a very uncomfortable sound. Yay! Odd sounds from below. That's just what I need to know. 
What is that noise? There's someone probably just like working on shit. Sounds like it's coming from below. Oh my. Did I just steal a keyboard? That's fucking nice. Probably just wore someone working on woodwork. Um. Wait, how do I go back? Let's go up on stage. Hell yeah. This is terrifying. I don't like this at all. Oh god! No me gusta at all, sir! Fuck no! Just an old radiator. That's not what was making the noise, my girl. You know that's not what was making the noise. I can't go through. The fuck is the point then? The hell? That was nothing. Can I go on the ride, please? 